next week. Thanks so much, Steve. All right. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the SEC because obviously there's a tight title race. Tennessee is in if they win out while things get complicated if Georgia wins tonight. We could end up with a scenario of six or seven teams with two losses. If that's the case, Alabama or LSU would likely end up in the championship due to tiebreakers. Texas and Texas A&M still play each other in what will probably be a championship play-in game. So, AC, when you look at this, who do you like to make the title game? Right now, I'm going to go with Texas number one and then probably Alabama because Alabama beat Georgia. Yep. And if Georgia beats Tennessee today, it's going to get wacky. It's going to get crazy. Right. I just like the way Alabama's playing right now. I think Kalen DeBoer understanding that the strong suit of Jalen Milrow, yes, he can pass the football, folks. But why not play towards your quarterback's greatest strength? That's running the football. We seen what he did last week versus LSU. LSU yes, over 180 yards rushing, uh, four touchdowns. Uh, they really had no answer for Jalen Miro, so I'm going to go with Alabama and Texas. Yeah. So I, so, I would agree. Yeah. Or, and obviously, you see the percentage there. Tennessee versus Texas, another high one. Um, if the Vols are obviously able to get the job done today. Okay, so the conversation when it comes to the SEC, it's so interesting because there are so many tight games and yep. teams beating other teams. So, if you look at the SEC as a whole, forget record. What team do you trust the most? Gosh, how do you trust any of them, man? You get, I mean, you look at you could look at just about any team in the SEC, and their best game you're like, holy crap! Like they could beat anybody in the country, and then their worst game you're like, boy, they stink. Yes, <laughs> Georgia stank last week, right? <laughs> Alabama, we've seen them stank, but we've also seen them really damn good, yes, right? It's crazy. And, uh, if I had to pick one, I I think I would go Alabama. To be quite honest with you, like. Georgia has been so just poor on offense. Yeah. They can't do enough on defense for me to, to feel differently. Tennessee, they have holes in that offense as well. Nico has not looked the same quarterback ever since SEC play started. That offensive line yeah. is leaky in itself. The defense is obviously really good. But to me, when they are at their best, I think Alabama is the best team in the country. But they just don't play their best all the time. So, But in terms of the conference, I would go Alabama. I'm going to go Alabama as well because they have the wild card. And it's a quarterback that can get you out of trouble when a bad player rises offensively. And that's Jalen Milrow. So when I look at other quarterbacks across the league, there's no quarterback that can get their team out of trouble like we see Jalen Milrow does time and time again. Now, granted, he's had some games where he t he's turned the football over. They haven't been great. But at the end of the day, if I had to bet money on who I think can be that player, that one guy that's a bright spot and be dynamic on all suits, I'm going with Jalen Miro, number four. And that's a great point because, like, we know who it ain't. Is it? It's not going to be Carson Beck. Nope. True. It's unlikely to be Marcel Reed if they face a team like a Georgia where you have to go up against a really good run defense, right? I mean, you look across the SEC. Again, Nico hasn't been his best during I'm conference I'm going to say with play. Nico, Nico's still in his young phase, right? right? He's, yeah. yeah. A lot of and people forget grow. he's in his yeah. first year starting yeah. as a quarterback. Yeah. So I, I think, of, to your point, of all those quarterbacks, I'd go Jalen. All right, let's take a look at the big picture here because the SEC kind of, I feel like the CFP kind of uh, runs through the SEC, figuring out what's going on here. Um, and look at the playoff ranking. So Georgia dropped all the way down to number 12 after last week's loss. They're currently the first team out, right? Meanwhile, Tennessee stayed put at number seven and were leaped by Indiana and BYU. So Georgia has the number one strength of schedule in the country. Should the Bulldogs be upset with how the committee is valuing them uh yes and no like it, this this is kind of boring to say this all usually works itself out right because i know the complaint is you know you look at indiana strength of schedule right doo -doo, but they also haven't lost the football game and the thing that i think is important and this is kind of where i think everything gets sort of jumbled they've controlled every single football game that they've been in except for last week against michigan and so I think you have to factor that in, along with strength of schedule, all those different kinds of things. Obviously, injuries we know is a big one now. Uh, so I, I think you have gripes if you're Georgia. You can fix whatever the committee thinks of you tonight. And you kind of have to, and you should, in order to make the dance. 
Well, I'm not going to be nice about it. Uh, yes, they should be mad as hell. And here's why. When you have the number one strength of schedule in the country, you go on the road, you play a Texas, and you beat the number one team in the country at the time. You play the Ole Miss on the road, right? You, you played Alabama on the road. Now you have number seven, Tennessee, here at home. They have a ferocious schedule. So it doesn't make any sense to me because when I look at teams like Texas, Penn State, Indiana, those three, those three teams don't have a ranked win right now on their schedule. Mm -hmm. I also have an issue with BYU being at six and Indiana being at five. I, I feel like BYU deserves to be higher than Indiana. And SMU's too low too. And the way that the committee clearly looks at SMU is based on the A pre preseason poll. Yes. Because we didn't have BYU all the way up there. And so because they lost to them by three points when they didn't have their quarterback situation figured out, they're like that three point loss against what they have as the number six team in the country, like that's that's your only loss. Christine, I love you. Uh -huh. And they got the best wins in the ACC. But Miami should not be ranked higher than, than SMU right now. They should. Now. Their only I'm loss not gonna argue with that. came to a team that's undefeated right now and potentially is going to play in the Big 12 I'm not going to argue it with just, that. The, it, it's not – there doesn't seem like a very – like there's a lot of factors that yeah. we're talking about here and because you're right well, on that, the strength that's of schedule. because a lot of people may want Miami to be the ACC right. champion. Yeah. But we also got to face reality. Yeah. SMU may come out and be the ACC champion when it's all said and done. Yes. But that also puts another peculiar situation on the Big 12. Yeah. What if a BYU loses in the Big 12 championship game, but then SMU, who is an ACC champion, wins the ACC and they have a victory over them? Yeah. And then how is Penn State ranked over Indiana? Yep. And Texas's best win is against Vanderbilt. And you got your teeth kicked in by Georgia. It's actually crazy because I think the fact that it isn't a four-team playoff this year, is it, it's making it a little bit more complicated. Even when you look at the rankings, right, the bracket doesn't yeah. even reflect the rankings just based on what teams actually get right. a bye and get automatically bidded in. So it's, it's just a very interesting situation, and I feel very bad for the committee because I think they thought it was going to be a little bit easier. It seems like it's a little bit harder. And their solution is going to be expanded. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you all this, though. Teams, yeah. I, I lost it on Freddie and Harry, my radio show, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday to Friday. Make sure y'all check that plug. out. I lost it the other day because looking at the bracket, and it had Miami at four, right? Uh huh. And I'm saying to myself, why in the hell is Miami at four? They're not even leading the ACC right now. It's where they were ranked, ninth, yeah. ahead of SMU. And I'm saying to myself, but SMU is leading the ACC right now. Yeah. With their only loss coming to an undefeated BYU team. So it made no sense to me. It is it's a little bit all over the place. But as Harry said, it's very boring, but it will figure itself out as the season yeah, progresses. Yeah, yeah.